CS. You want to know what it is. Well, I think the short answer is it's one of the most interesting electronic projects you can possibly take on. Now, this video is going to be intended for people who enjoy building their own devices and can handle a soldering iron, have a little bit of experience with assembling things. You actually can assemble your TDCS unit on a perf board that doesn't require any soldering. So just basically following setup instructions or at the end of the video, I want to make some kits available that are essentially assembled. You just add a couple of wires. So why would somebody want to connect electrodes to their forehead and the top of their head? Well, the short answer is this has been shown by an enormous body of evidence to do things like decrease depression, decrease anxiety. In my own experiments, just goofing around with this myself, I was the biggest skeptic in the world. And any friend or if you've watched my other videos, you know, I tend to be the biggest skeptic in the world, but this really has won me over. If, if nothing else, the claim that I want to make is that it does do something. And I think you'll agree if you get into experimenting with this. This is for informational purposes only. I know other people in the past who've offered this kind of information said that they were only offering the device as a plant growth stimulator. So I'll go ahead and I'll take the same approach and I'll tell you we're not giving any medical advice. This is just something for information purposes only. So what exactly is the unit? The unit is amazingly simple. You simply have to put a direct current of between 0.5 and 2 milliamps through a couple of saltwater electrodes and then identify an exact position on your head, your forehead, your temple, depending on the effect that you want to achieve. So the device that I'm using, I've come up with a little phone app, which is free for you to download. If you use what's called an on-the-go cable with your phone, you can even operate your TDCS device from the phone and it will get power from the cord. And these devices have gotten fairly small in size. The electrodes that I'm using are just a couple of sponges and you'll see in the construction portion of the video that these were actually caps from some Play-Doh that I got at the dollar store. But they look like very official electrodes and they work like them too. So let's get into how to build your own unit how to put it on, what a typical session is, and you too can have an amazing plant growth stimulation session. Okay, making our electrodes is actually gonna be a lot of fun. I don't think it matters what type of sponge you use. I happen to use UFO sponges from my favorite store, the $1 store. Just make sure if they're UFO sponges that they are made safely in China and are not from an actual alien spacecraft. Okay, here we see the sponge. I used a layered sponge so that I could just peel off one layer of the sponge and I could get the thickness I wanted. Again, all these dimensions are not particularly important, so you can probably go thicker, but I was emulating the commercial designs. So the commercial designs generally had a sponge that was about a quarter inch in depth. And an inch and a half in diameter is ideal. Most of the major studies actually used larger electrodes than these, but the newer machines are coming out with smaller electrodes, presumably so you get a little bit more precise placement. And I've never had a trouble as long as it's at least an inch and a half. So in order to attach a uh, wire to your electrode, uh, what I did is I came up with a very simple plan. Because you're using salt water, you don't want the connection to your electrode to corrode. So you can buy wire glue. Wire glue is simply graphite mixed with a little bit of glue so that it's conductive, but graphite being carbon essentially is rust proof for the most part. So you can have these electrodes last a very, very long time. In order to connect it up, I just took the end of a wire and I scraped off uh, the insulation. I put it on top of my future saltwater electrode and took a washer. If you wanna be slick, you could use a brass washer. You could even solder to a brass washer if you wanted. And I sandwiched that wire with some of this glue uh, in, in between the sponge and the metal backing. And that made a terrific disposable electrode. Now the sponges last a long time. I've actually used one of these for many, many months and not really seen any deterioration at all. However, I notice again that the commercial units had replaceable sponges. So in order to accomplish that, I went again to my favorite store, the dollar store, and I got some lids for some finger paints. So this is actually a finger paint lid. Uh, any lid, there's so many plastic lids, so many plastic containers, for sure you will find something that fits at almost any store. I drilled a little hole in the side, I ran the wire inside, so I have my scrapings of wire there, and my plan is to put my wire glue on the metal washer and glue those wires to it, and I wind up with a beautiful seat here where my uh, sponge can fit and it actually snaps in to the seat. There we go, 
and we have a replaceable and a cleanable sponge this way. So this can come in and out. And the reason I'm using the wire glue, because as you can see, this would be perfectly conductive, uh, even without the wire glue, is by coating the metal washer, and again, you may want to use brass, with the wire glue, you wind up with a thin coating of carbon, which then protects this from corrosion. I haven't seen any issues at all with corrosion on any of the units I've used, but I like to be extra, extra careful. Okay, so while I assemble your circuit, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the schematic. Now, if you're intimidated at all by schematics, don't worry, I'm gonna also have simple point-to-point -point wiring instructions, both in the video and on the web page. But the heart of our circuit is a little LM334, which is a current regulator. Now, a lot of the schematics that I found on the internet, I wanna caution you about, and they often used little current regulators that were designed for larger currents. So when you get down to these tiny currents that we want, a little one or two milliamp current, they weren't very stable. So I definitely think a major improvement in the circuit is to use a little LM334. The second thing that our circuit features is a 7660, which is configured as a voltage pump. Now the reason for that, this might be a little confusing when you first see it, but the reason for the voltage pump is skin resistance in a person can vary by a factor of 10. And most of these devices didn't take that into account at all, although commercial units definitely do. So by coming from a USB port, which has about five volts coming out, and wiring those two leads into the 7660 first, we're gonna have a little higher voltage going into our LM334 so that we're gonna bypass those problems that people have with skin resistance. So with these two devices wired up, I then have got a resistor feedback network here, which simply allows you to select between uh, two milliamps output, 1.5 milliamps output, or one milliamp output. And to tell you the truth on my own unit, I just wire them for two milliamps output. It's such a small current that I don't really feel anything from that much at all. And I figure why not go for the max? But hey, that's my personality. You can definitely do it any way you like. You can also change these out for a little 100 ohm potentiometer if you prefer. And then you can dial in any current that you would like all within that range. Just make sure to leave that 470 ohm resistor here because that makes sure you don't exceed the range that you'd want to exceed. So if assembling this is any challenge to you, remember I'm gonna make some kits available and I think all the kits are gonna require is that you connect your two wires here to the output, to the anode and the cathode. But that is our basic schematic. All right, I'm all wired up. So there's nothing more to this than I've got a headband. This is a bling headband from the dollar store. And with two of these, you can put one behind your head and then stretch it over the top to make electrode positions at the top of your head. I've got it here in the DARPA position. So I've got it on my right temple, one pad. This is the positive pad. And then the negative pad is over here on my shoulder. Each of these pads was soaked with a little bit of a salt water solution. And I just used the same stuff that people use to clean their contacts with. Because you'll be likely to clean these pads after every use, ordinarily the water would evaporate and the salt concentration would increase. But as long as you wash your pads fairly regularly and then reapply some of this contact lens cleaner solution, uh, you should be just the right pH most of the time for good conduction. And you can actually tell when it's not a good contact. So I've got my smartphone here. I've got a little on-the-go cable. The on-the-go cable will allow you to power your device as well as to monitor your device from the phone. And we'll simply take that USB connection and we'll plug it into the USB here on the on-the-go cable. And by tapping the top of my little phone app here, we can go through and we can find the electrode placement for what it is we want to do with our session. And then at the bottom, I can click timers and our session begins and we can time it. Usually 20 to 30 minutes to a session. Uh, sometimes when it first kicks in, you can feel it in the pad a little bit. Other people report that they don't feel anything. A very small number of people had a little bit of skin irritation, so I always give a little rinse after uh, I've completed a session. And you can barely feel it working, but you'll definitely realize it was working later. And it is that simple to hook up and do a session. And there's nothing preventing you from doing something useful at the same time. You don't have to meditate, although that can be a lot of fun too. With your TDCS device, you're going to be tempted, because it has a USB connection, to plug it into a computer or other device which is plugged directly into the wall. 
And with anything that connects to your body, you never want to plug it into anything, even indirectly, that is connected to line voltage. It's always possible there'll be a voltage surge or a lightning strike nearby or a whole variety of things. And contrary to popular belief, no one hit by a lightning bolt to date has ever actually become a superhero. So until that happens, only power your TDCS device using a portable battery. This is a recharger for a cell phone. It has a USB connection right on it. These run about $5 on Amazon. I got this at the dollar store of all places and your USB can plug right into that. It will power your TDCS device for more than a month. It'll recharge more than 700 times. So it's really lifetime.